Hey everybody, welcome to another live edition of The Sewing Report. I am your host, Jennifer Moore. And yes, my sewing machine did cost more than my wedding. If you're joining us, thank you very much. And we're going to be hitting on a number of topics in this show. I know there's a lot going on again this week with uh, Hurricane Irma, but we're going to press on and we're going to hit a number of topics, including talking about my super cheap wedding. We're also going to be talking about how much you should spend on a sewing machine. I'll, I'll go over what I spent on my sewing machines and kind of how I came to those decisions. I know we're all different people and we all have different ways of doing things. And hold on a second because I forgot to plug in my headphones here. Okay, here we go. All right, now I can sort of hear what's what's happening. But we're going to be talking about money, which I know is a bit of a sensitive topic. And and here's the thing, everybody's going to have a different budget, different needs. So this is definitely not like a one size fits all type of show. But, you know, we're going to we're going to pop up the chat and see in a minute and see uh, you know, just everyone else can weigh in because that's the thing where if there's a group of us here, we can sort of collaborate together and help each other out and maybe offer some advice on someone if you're looking for a sewing machine or if you maybe have a beginner sewing machine and you are looking to upgrade into something else. Uh, let's just talk about it. So yeah, let's let's get down into it. But I'm Jennifer Moore with The Sewing Report. We help you discover your love of sewing. And every Sunday we have a live show at 3 p.m. Eastern time and talk about different things that are affecting us as a community. Sometimes these shows can be a little random. And of course, I like to do a lot of random sidebars. So anyways, welcome everybody. All right, we've got a Jul Oh, Julian's back. Hey, Julian, we haven't seen you in a little bit. What have you been sewing lately? We've got Amy, Gay, and Melita, and Colette. Hello, everybody. So yeah, that, um, and by the way, that title is not at all clickbait. Um, I've listed some of the details from my own uh, courthouse wedding in the description box. Um, I had kind of forgotten, like, how much I had spent on it, but, uh, you know, I figured, you know what, I'm, I'm up for talking about it, and... And, and here's my thing. So I'm, besides sewing, another thing that I'm really into is, is personal finance and talking about money and um, that sort of thing. So, and, and, and here's the thing, my husband James and I, we, we have certain things in our lives that we, there are certain things we want to invest more money in and there are other things we don't really care about. We don't really eat at restaurants. Um, I don't, obviously don't get my hair and nails done. So there's some things, you know, and, and that's the thing, everybody's different. Everyone has things that they like to spend their money on versus other things. I'm not a car person, so I drive a pretty crappy car and I really don't care uh, because I'd rather spend... In fact, one of my sewing machines, my sewing machine's probably approaching the, worth, the net worth of my vehicle. So I figure, you know, why not talk about it? And uh, oh, uh, Julian just made a sushi shirt. All right, I'm going to have to check that out um, after the show. That sounds really cool. Did you use like a sushi fabric? We've got Kathleen and Judy in Denver and we've got Victoria's here. Uh, so Victoria, are you Vic? Did you just change your username from Vic to Victoria? Um, if so, awesome. Hello from Newfoundland. Wow, very cool. So yeah, so um, I have several sewing machines. Let me kind of go over what I've got. And then I'll also tell you the story about my, my wedding as well, um, if you want to hear it. Um, hopefully, yes, since you clicked on this show and saw that was the title. But yeah, I definitely spent, uh, I kind of was looking at all my sewing machines and there's only one that costs less than my wedding. And that was the Brother 1034D Serger, which I love. That was $200. So um, yeah, so my husband met, my husband and I, we've been together for close to, for Actually, about oh, we've been together for nine years, but our wedding anniversary is in December. So we actually had a very quick courtship from meeting to wedding, and we got engaged about uh, after really only spending ten days together. I don't know if I would recommend that for everybody. And in fact, I'm thinking about making some videos about that topic on the personal channel that I've. Uh, just kind of started dabbling with. Um, if you're not aware, there's a link in the description box. Um, obviously, I love sewing, but I know that, um, you know, I, I asked you guys before and you would rather see non-sewing content elsewhere. So I'm starting to make some videos on other things. Like, again, I'm really passionate about uh, personal finance and money and living below your means and living on a, 
budget and also finding ways to um, ways to live cheaper but still living well. So that channel, that's what that channel is going to be about. It's called Gen Talks Forever because obviously I like talking, so I figured that would be a good channel name. But you're welcome to check it out. There's a link in the description box, and I've started posting some kind of random videos. Uh, some of them are going to be about money. Some of them are just going to be kind of weird. Uh, so if you like weird, that might be another place for you. And if you've been following this channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm, uh, I'm not really, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a little off the beaten trail. So, but yeah, so we got engaged after knowing each other for, uh, for, we'd known each other for six weeks, but we'd really only spent 10 days together. We met at um, a col mutual college friend's wedding. And th these are my rings. So, okay, let me see if you can... So this, my husband bought this engagement ring um, on his way. He was driving from Ohio to Florida to see me, and he bought this on the way down. We had not known... And again, if you're single out there, this is not necessarily something I would recommend. You could end up getting murdered or something, but... Um, I guess for me and for him, we had a, the, having that mutual friend in common to vouch for the other person definitely made a difference. He had known this guy since childhood, and I had known this guy for a very long time. So, uh, you know, it just sort of clicked, I guess. I don't know. And we're still together. Um, it's not all rainbows and unicorns, but we make it work. And uh, but yeah, so and actually, this is my second wedding ring. The first one I lost under a refrigerator, and I never saw it again. But, um, yeah, so the breakdown of the wedding, our, um, actually, our wedding rings were from Amazon. And they cost, I think, combined, like, 50 or $70 for both of the rings. Um, and then, yeah, I lost the one, so my husband gave me a replacement one for Christmas. Um... But yeah, let me get that chat window up here so we can see what everybody's saying. Okay, I don't... Actually, hold on a second. Something's going wrong with the chat window, so give me just a second. I don't know what's happening with this thing. Well, let me try this again. Okay, here we go. All right. All right, so now you guys can see what everyone else is saying. Yay! But, um, but yeah, so we got engaged very quickly, and we decided to get married at the courthouse. I'm kind of a private person with my personal life, um, so we thought that would be best. Plus, the idea of spending like ten, twenty, or thirty thousand dollars on a wedding just didn't really appeal to me. So we decided to go that route. We got married at the courthouse, and um, the total cost. And I listed. I actually found the breakdown. I used to blog on a really embarrassing blog a long time ago, and I wrote about it. So I found that information. Uh, so the cold, total cost for my wedding was three hundred and three dollars this was in 2008 um i wore a dress i already owned and in fact it's still in my closet it was just some dress i got from like the limited that was white eyelet um so the justice of the piece and everything was like 150 bucks or something so it was very it was very cost effective and uh yeah we'd pay i bought like a bunch of notarized copies of the marriage license oh and um they gave us like Okay, so, and I've got some pictures of the wedding as well. So, okay, oh, we got a couple more comments. Okay, we'll get to the comments in a second. I'll just, I'll just get through this story. But, um, but, so yeah, so the wedding, the courthouse stuff was like 150 bucks. And including, that included, um, this sounds like you're going to like a fair or something, but you got a souvenir photo. So they took a photo. It was like a really unflattering picture, a very unflattering picture of us both. Um, and then they gave it to you in this like cheesy frame that has like, you know, the courthouse name and then like some heart stickers of hearts or something. It was really bad. Um, but I do have some photos. So let me get the photos up. Hold on a second. I managed to find these and I was like, holy cow. So this is... Uh, all right. Hold on a second. This is uh, James and myself on our wedding day in December of 2008. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, um, I've i since done a little more eyebrow shaping. And actually, he's thinner than... He's, like, thinner and looks better than when we met. I have gained, like, 30 pounds. So, you know, we were young and in love and uh yeah that's like th that that courthouse room was like soup it was like straight out of like the early the early 90s 
So, we've got that, yeah. Uh, okay, and apparently we've got a couple other courthouse wedding folks. So let me know too, if your wedding was also really cheap, let me know. And uh, also, our, I don't regret it at all. Um, it was very private and, you know, we just wanted to get married. And actually the next day we, uh, so the $300 included all of the court stuff. And then it all, we all, I also threw in the cost. We had a nice dinner and we spent a night at a resort um, on St. Pete Beach in Florida, which currently is going to be... Uh, uh, hopefully not too devastated by Hurricane Irma, but um, it was a very, it's a very nice area. And St. Pete Beach isn't too touristy, so that's another plus. But um, So yeah, that was our uh, wedding and like one night honeymoon extravaganza. And then the next day we ended up moving. Okay, and I've got another photo. Let me bring this up. Hold on a second. This is the sign that was at the courthouse like they had like it looks like an airplane bathroom where it's like vacant you know occupied no entry during ceremonies so i found those photos so i just wanted to to share them um and yeah so that's uh you know i know this isn't directly sewing related but uh that's how cheap i am uh actually we both are and uh yeah so the wedding was three hundred dollars uh and probably that's like the price of like that's less than the price of like the ever sewn machine. Um, See, so yeah, obviously I've got my priorities really straight here. So we've got that. And then, uh, okay, we got Helen. She got married at the courthouse. Kathleen, she wore a pretty dress from the outlet store. Uh, Victoria, uh, her wedding was $5,000 with the dress included. Can is that Canadian? Cat, cat, okay. Okay, Melita, we did the courthouse. And yeah, for everybody who did the courthouse wedding, let me know like why did you decide to do it? We just wanted to get married and I didn't and also for me the idea of planning a wedding just seemed like kind of a nightmare I had been in a bunch of weddings as bridesmaid and it didn't really look fun it just didn't look fun to me like doing all of that planning and all that stuff just looked like oh I don't I don't want to do that uh, in fact I planned like one bridal shower and even that was like too much for me I was like holy crap I don't yeah this is the la probably the first and last time, like, I had fun and it turned out well, but, like, it was so stressful, even planning a bridal shower for someone else, that I don't, the idea of planning my own wedding was just too, it was too much. I like low-stress situations. In fact, I don't even go to venues. Like, I don't, we don't go to concerts or anywhere crowded because um, I don't like crowds. I don't like huge parking lots. I don't like any situation where parking or a bathroom is going to be like a stressful situation. So I like to stay at home most of the time. And that's why sewing is really uh, good for me. PSA for sewing, right? Oh, and I've got, um, I actually went through my Amazon history. I've been an Amazon customer since like 2004 and I found my exact wedding, the exact order for the wedding rings. Yeah. So that's, uh, those are our wedding rings. My husband actually, James actually can't really wear them. He was getting problems with his finger. Like, and I, I guess this is like a legit thing because I've heard of like other people that got, that have had it, but um, the finger he had his wedding ring on, he just started getting some problems with it. So I've got a couple, a couple more comments. We've got uh, Amy after one month. Okay. Okay. Kathleen. Okay. We, all right. A lot of people want to weigh in on the wedding. Okay. Erica, we got a Polaroid with the judge at her courthouse wedding too. Lol. Actually, that would have been a good idea. We should have gotten a selfie with the, uh, with the with the uh justice of the peace and you know what this was before instagram that would be an awesome instagram also one of my favorite actresses Kristen bell got married at the courthouse too so i feel like we've got stuff in common i've got helen i got married at the courthouse no regrets um okay melita she you've been with your husband seven years congratulations kathleen lots of expensive weddings end in divorce and that is right and in fact i saw an article that said like the more money you spend on an engagement ring and wedding, actually, statistically, you're more likely to get divorced, apparently. Amy, after one month of living together, my husband got home from work and told me he had 48 hours to decide if we could get would get married and two weeks to get married if we were going to. Amy, so, like, what was the... All right, I want, Amy, I want the backstory on that. What, um... Like, what was, uh... What was, like, the time crunch for that? Like, was he in the military or something? I'm assuming it was something job related I told me he had 48 hours that's awesome I guess obviously you did because you referred to him as your husband so um let me pop up the chat window again because those are some these are some pretty solid comments here 
All right, we've got Vic. I had a very traditional Anglican service with communion, and we had a reception here after we ate a cold plate, cold turkey, cold ham, potato salads, and coleslaw. All right, so we've got a few fellow, you know, uh, a lot of people into, I guess, into the same sort of lifestyle we do. That's pretty cool. We've got Erica, no regrets. Dress was a mauve, all over lace, clearance rack special. I like it. Got Kate, my wedding dress was a white two-piece gown from India, once worn by my sister-in-law for a glamour photo shoot. Is she like a model or something? It cost me $65 for custom fitting at a tailor. All right, champagne twist, neither of you are cheap. You got married the way you wanted, and that's the best way to go about it. All right, wow, Vi and Victoria made our own cold plates for 300 people. That is, wow, that is... That, I don't even have it, I, I, like, just drop the mic right now, Victoria. Wow, you made your own cold plates for 300 people. Wow. I've got Allison, you are smart. Uh, my son got married at the local courthouse, and we had lunch at Olive Garden. All right, low stress. And you know what? Um, sewing in trifocals, are you Allison? Um, I will say, um, my husband, who is a chef by trade, he has like two restaurants in the entire world he will actually eat at, and Olive Garden is one of them. So, uh, yeah, he will not eat at like most restaurants just because of what he uh, knows about the industry. Uh, so the two restaurants he will eat at are the Olive Garden. He actually likes the Olive Garden and thinks they have a lot of consistency and quality, for the especially for the price. And um, he also likes this restaurant in Miami called A Fish... Was it like a fish named Avalon or fish called Avalon? Let me look it up real quick. Fish called Avalon. Okay, yeah, a fish called Avalon in Miami Beach. He thought the food there was absolutely phenomenal. So he is a fan of that. Those are the only two restaurants he's had zero complaints with. Everything else, no, no. I've got Linda, also married at the courthouse. 43 years, congratulations. Okay, Amy, we're getting your backstory. He was in the Marine Corps and wasn't allowed to leave out of, wait, he wasn't allowed to live out in town unless married. That is interesting. So, like, oh, was it, like, live off base? Like, so is it one of those things where he could only get off base housing unless he was married? If so, hey, you know what? I know some people have gotten married for, like, insurance reasons. So, you know what? Why not? All right, we've got uh, Allison again. I had a regular traditional wedding and bad marriage. Two great kids, though. You know what? Sometimes, sometimes that happens. Allison, I hope that you are doing well and happy with your life. All right, Janessa, my husband and I got married at the courthouse alone. Then we had ceremony with family two weeks later. No one knew we were already married. Well, I guess they do now, right? <laughs> or maybe not. If Like, I'm going to guess your family doesn't watch this live show. So you're probably safe if you haven't told them. It's okay. I've got Allison. I finally bought my own sewing machine from the 40s. It is awesome, but I don't know how to operate. Allison... I would say try to find some YouTube tutorials. I have one that I made for the Eversone. It's probably a lot different than that, but I would try to find some online resources. I've got Amy. We got the license and had everything signed at a UPS store during his lunch when I was 19 and he was 23. Eight years and a lot of struggles later, we're still together. Amy, we've also been married eight years, and yet uh, marriage, is, marriage is really hard. It's very challenging, and... Um, uh, that's the thing, like, love, like, that whole, like, love will keep us together crap, I don't think that's true, like, after being married, I don't think that's true at all. Like, what keeps you together, I think, is the the commitment and the willingness to stay together, because you could very easily just go your, go your own way. So, yeah, I don't know. So that's, I just think the whole, like, love conquers all, like, you know, when you were in English class and the theme was, like, love conquers all, like, I don't, I don't think it does, especially not in the two, 2017 culture where, you know, divorce is super easy. Um, we got, let's see here. Okay, yes. So, yes, Allison, he does actually really like the Olive Garden. So, yeah, that's that's awesome. You know what? And you know what? They Doesn't the Olive Garden, I think they have, like, the most wine. Aren't they, like, one of the largest wine distributors or, like, wine, top in wine sales or something? I've got Champagne Twist. Wedding should be a fun, joyous, stress-free event. Oh, yes. If you're going into a marriage stressed because of social expectations, it won't bode well for the future. I would have to agree with that. Um, I went to a very... So I went to this... I was, like, kind of a, 
and I, I was thinking about making some more videos about this sort of thing on my personal channel. I do feel like a lot of women feel like they're like some sort of spinster or a loser if they're not married at 22. And as someone in their 30s, I can tell you otherwise. Life goes on. So I'm thinking about making some videos about that sort of thing just to give some encouragement and uh, uh, to, to young ladies because I feel like when you're like 18 to 25, everything just seems like too much of a big deal when really it's not, you know? Um, I was single until I was like between like the age of 19 and 20, 25. And you know what? I survived. I was fine. And actually, in, in a lot of regards, I think I was better off. So, but yeah, I was, so I was looking through my Amazon account to see like what, um, if our, like to see how much our wedding rings were. And I saw literally they are still, to this day, they're still available on Amazon. So if you're looking for some reasonably priced wedding rings, I would highly recommend that. All right, Julian, I spent more on shoes I wore to my college graduation than you did on your wedding. So glad I learned. Wow, <laughs> well, Julian, you must have really good taste in shoes. I, yeah, my shoes, I, I yeah, I'm, I, I, the older I get, the less I like shopping. Okay, Amy, unless you were married, you had to live in the barracks. You know what, Amy, that might be a good motivator for guys out there to get married. I think that's kind of awesome. So, and I've heard that before too, like the guy, the married guys get to live in like the off base house and you're getting apartments. So, hey, you know what? Why, why not? You know, hey, you're still together. It worked out. And uh, maybe that was the, the, uh, the, you know, the instigator or the catalyst for your marriage. I think that's kind of funny. All right, we've got, uh, not sure about the wine at Olive Garden. I had to drive home. Very, fair point. Fair point. All right, the so-called fairy tale wedding at the Century for Charles and Diana. Fancy wedding, lousy marriage, all show, no substance. Sherry, I'm I'm not married and over 50. And Sherry, you know what? You are living life. And you know what? That's the thing. Like, I think there's a stigma that if a woman's not married, you know, her life must not be as complete as everyone else's. And I, I, I honestly don't believe that at all. But I wish I could tell my 20-year-old self that it's going to be all, everything's going to be okay. Uh, cause 20 year old me was totally freaking out about being single and really it was just not that big of a deal. And I didn't realize I'm like, like you don't realize how young you are either. But anyways, um, all right, we've got Kate. I had a long and fulfilling life, then got married at age 61. All right. At 2014. All right. Helen, I'm 61. Can't imagine dating in the age of Tinder. Yeah, that really, Tinder really freaks me out. Those websites. Although I know a guy who actually met his wife on MySpace and they're doing great. So you can meet people anywhere. And I, I think sometimes we discount, you know, unconventional places. All right, Julian, they were on sale half off, but they look great. Almost 10 years later, still pull them out on, on occasions. Okay, let's see here. All right. Allison, waiting for the right man. A good man is best. No lady is a loser because she is single. Be smart. Do not marry Mr. Wrong like I did at age 20. Well, Allison, obviously you're a smart lady. Uh, you know, and that's the thing, no, I don't think anyone at age 20, um, like, I feel like I didn't start to really get life until I was, like, 30. Not to say, like, the younger me was, like, awful, although in some regards I think I was, but, um, I don't know, I just feel like uh, most young people are just not, they're just not developed enough to make good, some of them are not developed enough to make good decisions, you know, and then you realize how dumb you were later, you're like, wow. I didn't realize I was that stupid, but you know, you live and learn and a lot of people just have to learn the hard way and that's, it's sad, but it's also a learning process. But anyways, let's, uh, anyways, the show is supposed to be about sewing machines and I know it's totally gone off the rail. Um, so yeah, so my wedding was $303. The ever sewn machine that I have was, is $330. So that's definitely more. Uh, the Brother 1034D I have is less than the wedding. That was about $200. Uh, the, the one in the thumbnail, the Janome 20, uh, the Janome 7700, uh, definitely way more than the wedding. I paid $2,500 for that, which is like five times what the wedding was. Um, so yeah, that was definitely, that's definitely my most expensive machine. And I know I've mentioned this previously, but I, um, I have some buyer's remorse about the Janome. It's a wonderful, it's a really wonderful machine, and I'm not saying it's not good or it's not worth $2,500, but I don't know if I needed that much machine. 
especially because right after I bought it, the Genomi Skyline series went out. And originally when I was looking for a sewing machine, I was real heavy into quilting and I didn't do any garment sewing. So I was looking for a machine with a very large throat space and that machine had it. Um, and it was seemed real popular at the time. So I went ahead and did it, but um, in hindsight, I should have waited a bit to figure out my needs more. I was working with a brother SE400 at the time. That w that machine also more than the wedding that I paid about, we paid about $400 for. Uh, at the time, now it's $300, so now it's about the same price. Um, I also have a vintage, oh, you know what? The vintage Singer I have was slightly less than the wedding. Uh, so I got a vintage Singer 2012 off of eBay. That's a sewing machine I haven't used in a while, but um, I have still. I think I paid about $250 for that, and the guy threw in a free cabinet. So that actually is slightly less than my wedding. Um, and then I also have a Sailrite machine, the one that I don't use. And uh, I also, uh, yeah, there's a, so I've got about $3,000 in sewing machines that I'm kind of not sure about. Um, but as far as the Genomi goes, I really think that I would have been better off to wait a little bit and maybe look into the Skyline series because the Skyline series also has a fairly large throat space. Uh, they're also very pretty machines. Um, and they're like, they have some that are like, you know, a thousand to fifteen hundred that would have fit my needs also. And then I would have spent a thousand dollars less. Um, so I think if you're looking for a sewing machine, I really think you need to really take a lot of time to evaluate what your needs are. What do you need your machine the most for? What do you sew? How often do you sew? And also, would it be better, like, personally, I'm more into the unitaskers. Like, I like having a separate serger, a separate cover stitch machine, rather than having one machine that can do it all, because I hate switching out things. Uh, so as far as I know, a lot of folks will get, like, a sewing and embroidery machine combo. Um, I do not have an embroidery machine currently, but if I do pick one up, I'm going to get a separate machine. Maybe like that Brother PE770 that I've seen, something like that. Just because I would rather have a dedicated sewing machine for different tasks than have one big, you know, does-it-all machine, but that I constantly have to change settings or, you know, because that's the thing I hate about the sewing machines is, is changing settings on them. I'm like, ugh. Oh. You know, I already have it, even on my Genomi, I'm like, oh, I already have it set up to do buttonholes. I don't want to switch back to the walking foot. Like, I'm that lazy. So, um, to help me and also to save time, that's why I'm more into the unitaskers. All right, we've got a couple more comments. Uh, Brother Dream Machines, $17,000. Wow, used car pricing, a nice used, yeah. That's, uh, okay, that Brother, $17,000, that is more than my husband's Volvo cost. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And how, all right, here's my question too. Who is the, I want to know who the market is for machines that cost over $10,000. Like how many people buy machines over $10,000? I mean, there must be somebody, like how many do they need to sell to make it worth the manufacturing and development and marketing? I don't know, but I just, I don't, even if I'm like a millionaire, I'm not even sure I would buy a $17,000 sewing machine. I've got Champagne Twist, age 20, 0 to 25, you are learning to be a human being. I think that's exactly right. Then suddenly you're told you're an adult. I know this sounds cruel, but people shouldn't be allowed to get married until age 35. <laughs> Maybe some of us would be better off that way. All right, Julian, and this is a, something I wanted to bring up, have purchased all my machines gently used or real used, and my most expensive, the Juki, gets on my nerves the most, probably. Amy, any ideas for a sewing machine for quilting that won't break the bank? I definitely struggled with throat space with working on the fox and owl quilt I just finished. And Amy, that was a gorgeous quilt. Amy did post um, a picture. I believe you're the one that posted it on Facebook, correct? Beautiful quilt. Um, you know, Amy, I don't know how the other people in here feel about, but I think the Genomi Skyline series might be something for you to look at. Um, I believe they're all... some The quilting-only machines probably will be a thousand dollars but if you can get it used or if you can get like a floor model or some sort of refurbished deal from a sewing machine dealer it would definitely I think drop the price um because I really like the Janome for quilting I really do I think the 7700 is a great machine for quilting I just wish like I do think the Skyline series would have fit my needs just as well and they're actually quite a bit cheaper um for quilting I like I really like the Everson machines as well um, but the throat space is a little bit smaller. 
All right, we've got uh, Allison. I have a 2011 Singer Red Eye Treadle machine. Spent $134. That's awesome. And if you have any tips that you could offer other people for getting a deal on a sewing machine, feel free to share it here. We've got Victoria. I have one real machine. It's a Janome My Style 100. I got it in January, but if I could get another, I'd get a Janome M100 machine with the Canada 150 print on it. Linda, I have the Foff Passport 3.0. Now I wish I'd waited and bought the Eversone 30. I know, aren't they pretty? I'm so, I I like, I already have the Eversone 25. I don't need the 30, but the 30, the color of the 30 is just gorgeous. All right, Champagne Twist, you can't sew a dress with a marriage certificate. Spend the money on a good sewing machine. <laughs> Sherry says there's a difference between cheap and frugal. I would agree, and I think frugal... So here's the thing. I feel like the difference between cheap is just getting the cheapest thing possible. I think frugal is more you're trying to get the best deal on something of a higher quality. Like, you know, again, we have a KitchenAid mixer. Uh, we did get a really great deal on it. It was like two... Actually, that was in my Amazon order history. So I got... That's the cool thing about going through your Amazon order history. You can see everything you bought for like the last 10 years, which is kind of nuts. Um... But I think frugal is more like you want something good, but you you want to pay the least amount possible versus cheap being just buy the cheapest throwaway crap you can get, uh, which long term doesn't always work out. All right. Yeah. And Melita, yeah, sewing needs definitely change over time. Like again, in a few years ago, I wasn't sewing any clothes and now I am. And now that's where I got the serger and the cover stitch machine. And, you know, so you just have different needs. All right, Victoria, my first machine was somewhere around 300 Canadian dollars. This one is closer to 850. And yeah, I and here's the thing. If you're looking f like if you're trying to figure out your budget, um I know there's a lot of dealerships that are pushing you to finance the machines. Um I, personally, I will say I'm I'm against that. If you do finance machines and you know, that's your way of doing things. Look, we can still be friends. You know, I've there, you know, we all do things our own different ways, but I've I've actually decided here on this this channel and this show, I am not going I'm not going to encourage people to finance a sewing machine or to finance anything sewing related. Um I don't believe I, I personally am very averse to debt. I don't like debt. Um so anything with monthly payments or anything where you're not buying outright, um I've decided personally that I'm not going to promote it here. Uh, no matter what it is. So that is a uh, that is a commitment and a promise that I'm making to all of you guys. I'm never going to promote you to do something that I personally feel is financially unwise. Um, but again, if that's your way of doing things, you know what? Again, we can still be friends and have different viewpoints. Um, but I do want to put that out there that that's not something that I'm going to be pushing to any of you here or to any new sewists that come on the channel. Um, I, uh, for a while, I spent some time working at the Home Shopping Network, and, um, I got to see firsthand, you know, they, they, I got to see firsthand, like, they would sell sweaters in, like, kind of cheap costume jewelry on payments, and that made me sad, because I feel like a lot of people who are on a very tight budget, especially senior citizens who are on a fixed income, you know, are paying for things on a credit card and paying lots of interest for something like a sweater or makeup or, you know, something where that they don't really need. So, you know, again, I, I wanted to address that because I don't, um, if you are thinking about doing that, um, think about what happens. Um, don't just think of the best case scenario. Think of the worst case scenario. Look, sewing is awesome and I love sewing, obviously. Uh, but do I think it's worth, like, wrecking your finances over? Definitely not. So when you're getting a sewing machine, also think, um, not only can I afford the payments, but how much is this costing me? And also what happens, like, say you're on a four-year sewing machine finance deal and you lose your job or your spouse loses your job. Will you be, like, I guess you, I want you to think about, will you be able to afford the sewing machine payments if something bad happens in your life and you don't have as much money as you you do when you first made that decision. Um, I, you know, other than our mortgage, we have decided not to do things like that, like pay for things over time. So if we're buying things as, a, as consumers, my husband and I choose to do it outright versus something that requires payments or financing. That's just not, we've, you know, um, 
we've personally dealt with a lot of student loan debt, so we know firsthand what that's like to make monthly payments every month for years on end, and it's not fun. It's not fun, especially if something um, catastrophic or tragic happens in your life and you can't do that. All right, I know we've got a lot of com. Wow, we have a lot of comments. Um, I'm gonna try to get to some of these. All right. Um, I see a lot of older women with the really expensive machines at fabric shops I visit. I think they want to do all the fancy digitizing and such. Oh, and uh, Linda's here. Hello, Linda. All right, all right. Helen, my serger has black thread. I'm too lazy to change colors. I serge everything in black, Helen. You know, I think you're a woman after my own heart, Helen. Mindy, I'm unboxing my new brother 1034D today, and between your tutorial and the manual, I'm already up to speed. Just wanted to say thanks. Mindy, thank you. Thank you very much for the nice comment. I hope you enjoy the serger. And yeah, it'll though that serger will do like save you a lot of time and a lot of uh, effort. So I hope you enjoy it, and I think it's I do think it's a very good value for the money. All right, we've got Linda. Life is short. Sell the machine you don't like and buy a Skyline. And you know, here's the thing, Linda. I don't like I don't dislike the Janome 7700, but in hindsight, and now I probably wouldn't get much as a trade in for it. But you know, like I could probably get I would be trading a twenty five hundred dollar machine for a thousand dollar machine. So I'm gonna stick with the 7700. But in hindsight, I should have waited, and I could have saved a lot of money. All right, we've got uh, Tony. No one pays full price for a TOL. Oh, top of the line machine. A friend just bought a Baby Lock Destiny 2 with the Koala Cabot for less than 9000 Woo! Wow, that's a... Uh, that, I'm sure that's a deal, but man, that is still, still a lot of money. Victoria, my husband is a priest and we didn't have the option to live together before marriage. Young marriage works out for some. My mom's aunt got married at 15 and their marriage is strong as ever. That's awesome. All right, Vic, Victoria wants to know also, so also help Victoria out. Has anyone bought a secondhand machine? Obviously, I have. I bought the Singer 2012, um, and I bought it from someone who actually restores sewing machines. So he had, he had like tons and tons of sewing machines at his house that he sold on eBay as like a side business. I think he was also a nurse, and he lived kind of out in the boonies of Georgia. Um, so I went to pick it up. I know in hindsight that could have ended badly, but it didn't. So that's, I'm still alive. Uh, but yeah, if you bought a secondhand machine, help Victoria out. Let her know what your experience was like. Like, uh, Tony, I got a Destiny 2 that was used and refurbished for $6,000. Yes, I sew a lot. Tony, you must sew a lot. I've got uh, Kai Woman. I feel cheap. I bought my machine at Target for $90. Kai, you're, don't, don't worry about that. Um, and here's the thing. Like, I think it's easy to compare each other to other people that you see with fancy sewing machines, but... I think I think the the comparing yourselves to comparing ourselves to other people I think can be dangerous. Um, so don't worry about that. Just worry about does the sewing machine oh, <coughs> excuse me does the sewing machine fit my needs and also was it within my budget? And if those questions if the answers to both of those questions are yes, then don't don't give a crap what anybody else thinks. If you have a five dollar sewing machine. You, that doesn't mean you love sewing any less than someone with a $15,000 machine. Uh, so it's all about what your needs are. And that's why you shouldn't have other people telling you, you need to get this, you know, you're not a serious, you're not serious about sewing unless you spend at least $1,000 on a machine. You can be, you can do great things with a sewing machine of any price. So I don't know. That's what I think. All right. Uh, we got Linda. I've had my KitchenAid mixer for over 25 years. Yeah, those things seriously last forever. All right, we've got uh, Diana. She's got a Bernina 880, $12,000, too many bells and whistles, sometimes very frustrating. Husband wanted to surprise me. Wow. Okay, well, that is an awesome... Your husband really, uh, he really did want to impress you. Um, well, Diana, do you like the machine? I just, I'm curious. Do you like the machine? Obviously, it sounds like you, it sounds like sometimes it's a little, a little overwhelming. I can, I can definitely see that. Your husband sounds like a really awesome guy, though, to get you such a nice gift. JB, the first machine I bought was during college for $130 at Walmart. Looking at the Everstone Sparrow 30 for an upgrade. JB, I think that would be a good bet. And also, um, the Everstone 30 package has more stuff than the 25 does. It comes with that table, and it, I think it comes with something else that was really cool. So, the fact that it comes with the table... Oh, and the package I saw on Amazon came with extra bobbins, which I would definitely recommend... 
because the the Everstone comes with like four bobbins and you definitely need way more than that. Um, otherwise, it's going to be frustrating, like continuing to change out the thread of your bobbin. All right. Oh, okay. Kathleen, you're a trooper. Phone went dead. Laptop now. Awesome. I've got Allison. One can use sewing to save money. Instead of buying new clothes, repair and restyle. Restyling is money saving and fun at the same time. All right, Sherry, buying outright is a good thing. You can save your money and then buy. Yes, exactly. Um, Victoria, it might work out great for you. The only thing I was told is that if you buy a machine for cheap, it's likely it won't be able to be fixed if it breaks. But for $90, not a bad deal. Exactly. Victoria, I would agree with you. I think that, yeah, like if you're not sure if you like sewing or like you don't do it very often, getting a $90 machine is totally, totally fine. Like, you know, as long as it can do what you want it to do and, you know, it's within your budget, that's what matters, I think. All right, Janessa, my local sewing machine will let you rent machines during classes. A great way to test new machines or make sure you want to actually dive into sewing. I think that's great they let you do that. All right, Rebecca, my parents were generous and bought me a Janome Skyline S7 at $1,800, and I am still in shock. I know we could have gone much pricier. That's awesome, Rebecca. And Rebecca, I have a question. Is that the one that does the embroidery or is that the S9? Because I know one of them has an embroidery unit, correct? I believe. Um, Julian says my favorite machine is from Goodwill. And Julian, well, let me know what um, what kind of machine is it? Oh, and Julian also got a Singer Industrial on Craigslist for $25. Okay, that's crazy. Oh, and we've got a special, all right, we've got a special guest in here today. We've got Jason. If you're not familiar with Jason, he and his wife Brenda run Pink Castle Fabrics. They're an amazing, and they're actually the ones I'm working with. They um, are letting me borrow a cover stitch machine to try out and make videos for you guys. So Jason is a Janome expert. So if you guys have any questions about Janome machines in here, uh, shoot them to Jason or contact them. Contact Pink Castle Fabrics about Janome machines because they are very knowledgeable about machines. And in fact, Jason recently wrote a blog post explaining different sewing machine parts because even I was unfamiliar with a lot of them and like what they do. So Jason says, I always tell people it doesn't matter what the machine looks like. It matters what the project looks like. That's so true. If you can sew better on a $200 machine than a $2,000 machine, do it. All right, we've got uh, Champagne Twist. Uh, or Allison bought a second-hand machine for $35. That's awesome. And that's the thing. People are finding these crazy good deals on Craigslist and on eBay and, you know, estate sales on sewing machines. So if you're looking for a sewing machine, definitely try to hit up as many of those places as possible. You might find a gem in there. Julian obviously is... Uh, Julian, you sound like a Craigslist ninja or something. Champagne twist, don't buy anything for full price straight away. There is always a sale, a discount, something around the corner. Yeah, that's so true. There are sales on everything now, so if you just wait it out, often you can be patient, and that's how you can get the best deals when you're not in a situation of desperation. All right, Victoria, I remember what my mom gave me, a stitch in time machine when I was a little girl. Really, it's a toy, but I still use it sometimes. It has two stitches and a back stitch. That sounds awesome. All right, Linda. I wouldn't want my husband to pick out a machine for me. He used to go to the perfume counter and ask, what's new? So I ended up with whatever they wanted to sell. Well, you know what, Linda? Your husband does sound like a salesperson's dream, though. Uh, that's funny. What's new? That's kind of awesome. And uh, I think you're, you know what, your husband should start uh, like a blog or a vlog on like what random stuff he was sold. That sounds kind of, he, so he sounds pretty amazing though. So that's funny. He <laughs> goes, what's, what's new? Okay. But <laughs> Linda, and I also want to know what other kind of gifts has he gotten you? Or what other, is he one of those people, again, is he a salesperson's dream? And if so, what else over the years has he bought? because he was sold on it. That's like maybe Cutco knives or like Kirby vacuum cleaners or Tupperware, anything like that. All right, Kai Woman says, it's perfect. I've recently started sewing, made a few dresses, skirts, and tops. All right, we've got uh, Rebecca. The S9 does embroidery. I didn't need it though. Rebecca, you know what? You bought what you needed. That's awesome. All right, Jason says, shy wave. So yeah, if you do, if you are looking for any sort of information on Janome machines, um, Jason is here. So feel free to hit him up with questions because he knows a lot more about Janome machines than I do. I just know about using them and I like them. Amy says, I'm thinking about taking the feed dogs out of my great grandmother's Singer Treadle and seeing how it does for free motion quilting. You know, I did try some free motion quilting on the Singer 2012. 
I personally couldn't get it to work very well, but I've seen other people do it. Um, I just don't think I'm good enough for that sort of thing. All right, Victoria, a more expensive machine will normally tend to run smoother and quieter. So maybe keep that in mind for a future machine and test them out. All right, Kathleen says, I'm looking for machine auto tension. Economical, I saw one out of price range. But in Kathleen, what kind of sewing machines do you like? All right, Julian, all right, it's a straight, a Japanese straight stitch from the 50s. I love it. Most of my machines are from the shop Goodwill. I have over 15 sewing. So all right, Julian, I don't know if you've done a video of this, but if you haven't, I know, Julian, you have a YouTube channel. You need to make... A video about your sewing machine collection and telling the stories about all how you came to own all these sewing machines I think you need to do that as a video I would definitely watch that like you could kind of do an overall video where you're like going through all of your sewing machines and maybe you could even do individual videos going more into detail on a specific machine because I think that's cool that you have such a big sewing collection all right oh we've got a question for Jason um, so Jason if you'd like to answer this feel free to go ahead uh, can my style 100 take a twin needle? The instruction book says nothing about a twin needle and I can't get it to work right. Allison, what I did when I bought the anchor, I opened the thing and followed the manual. It explained all the parts I needed. Oil works like new. All right, we've got, Bre oh, Brenda's here. Glad I was able to catch you. I'm loving this topic. Can't wait to go back through the live chat later on. This has been a fun show, you guys. And um, I know I honestly wasn't, I was like with the hurricane coming. I don't think there's going to be many people in here. Um, but you guys are showing up, so uh, thank you so much for joining in on this really fun conversation. Um, I know there is a, we, it's been a rough couple of weeks for weather um, in many parts of the country. Um, and my, and full disclosure, my parents actually live in Sarasota. Um, so I've been praying for them and uh, hopefully they, uh, they decided to hunker down and stay. They're not in a, uh, an evacuation zone. They're in like the lowest evacuation level, so they're pretty far inland. But if you are in Florida or have friends or family in Florida, my heart goes out to you guys. Please stay safe um, because this is a very this is still a very dangerous storm. Um, even if it ends up being a Cat Three when it goes through, it's still very very dangerous. Um, so yeah, and I actually used to live in Tampa, the Tampa St. Pete area, um, so. I, like pretty much all of my a lot of my friends uh live there so i've been talking to a lot of them and, and getting updates via facebook uh from a lot of my my former co-workers and friends that still live there and family members and it's kind of surreal because um when you move to saint the saint pete tampa area people are like oh we haven't had a direct hurricane hit in a hundred years well our time is due so hopefully i know it's supposed to hit a lot of areas of florida tonight uh, it's already gone through South Florida, um, but I'm I'm worried. I'm worried about the people I know and love. So, um, if you are in Florida or you have family in there, please, um, you know, definitely let it let us know. And hopefully, everyone's hope. I I really hope this one is. I'm really hoping for the best. I know um, the worst can happen, but let's uh, hopefully hopefully everybody's safe and uh, able to get through this with minimal damage. That would be awesome. All right, we've got, okay, Victoria, I look forward to this every week. Thank you so much. We've got Julian. Yes, Julian, you need to make some videos. Um, I don't know what you could call it for the title. Like, um, what if you call it, like, I'm a dude and I've got 15 sewing, I'm a dude with the, let's see, like, I'm a dude and I've got 15 sewing machines. That would be a good title. And then your thumbnail, Julian, is you with, like, all 15 sewing machines in the background. Like, that could go viral, I think. I don't know. Just an idea. I think I would, uh, that would be really cool because you do seem to have, and also um, maybe you could make videos showing about how you get de good deals on sewing machines. That's something that obviously you're very good at. Um, I'm not good at that. Um, and my husband doesn't really like me to do Craigslist because he's afraid of um, my safety. So um, we don't tend to do Craigslist a lot just because my husband is very paranoid about safety. Uh, but you're a guy, so I think you'll be, you're a, probably a lot less likely to be a crime victim than a small Asian woman, probably. I don't know. I could be totally wrong, but, uh, you know, but obviously you're, uh, you know, I think, I think you've got less to worry about than me. All right, we've got Linda. Now, my husband gets me gift certificates from random businesses around town. <gasps> Every once in a while, he gets one from a business I'm actually interested in, though. He is sweet, though. Oh, 
that ran so gift certificates from random businesses that's kind of that is that is kind of hilarious but he sounds he sounds like a real fun guy though all right judy time to weigh in my mar married in my mother-in-law's living room with just four other people married for 32 years dated four and a half years first wedding anniversary i was gifted car mats and a bow tie antenna was that from your husband that is that is kind of cool all right car mats and a bow tie antenna you know what that's it's a very practical gift um and if you needed the car mats although i'm sure that i know that might not be the most romantic gift but you know what it, it victoria is right it is the thought that counts janessa my mom is in punta gorda florida prayers with all others then yeah i will definitely prayers to janessa's mom i hope she's okay and hopefully she is in an area that is safer and maybe farther inland all right kate read you know me although i've had a 40-year love affair with my bernina I observed and tried out uh, the lot, the Janome. Um, smooth and beautiful flowing machines. Also at Christmas time, good financing opportunities. All right, we've got Linda. My grandma's name is Irma. Oh, is she having fun with this? I've also noticed like the Publix, I guess, are making like cakes and cookie cakes that say like, go away, Irma, or something. And people are like, I will say the storm prep for this has been kind of entertaining on Facebook. Um, right before I jumped on this show, I saw someone posting a video of like garbage cans rolling down the street and the flooding and some flooded streets um saying it was a garbage can race okay we've got uh let's see allison thread stands work well if you have no second spool pin okay and jason he's weighing in for victoria about the twin needle that is awesome all right and uh julian i always go with someone else when going to pick something up from craigslist never mind julian that's a really smart idea also um if you are doing craigslist uh um, don't, if you can avoid meeting at your house, do it, meet and, and going to someone else's house. Um, I had used to do Craigslist a little bit, a little bit more and I would meet at like a public parking lot. Like, like I would say like, you know, what town do you live in? Let's meet in between or something. And then I meet at like, uh, an Atlanta bread company. I think I did one transaction at like an Atlanta bread company parking lot. So that's uh, all. So yeah, if you are doing secondhand deals, if you're buying and selling things online, Definitely, uh, don't put yourself at, on, in, at unnecessary risk. Make sure that you are, uh, uh you know, m being smart about it. Uh, Julian, that's a good advice. Yeah, go with someone else. Yeah, and definitely, like, if you're doing something, try to meet, if you can, like, if the item is, like, kind of a smaller item, meet at, like, a Walmart parking lot or, like, a 7-Eleven, somewhere there, where there's witnesses, people, and surveillance cameras, um, because you don't want to be, you don't want to be that person that ends up on the news for, uh, for something bad um so it's not worth it even if you are getting a really awesome deal on a sewing machine all right we've got um are they thinking this storm is going to be as bad as harvey you know victoria i've seen some reports that say yes and in fact but i've actually been off this week um but here's the thing so i remember a few years ago when there was um a tropical storm coming through it wasn't even the initial it wasn't the initial storm coming through that was the problem. It was all the rain. Like, the storm was very slow moving, and it kept raining, and that made drainage very difficult. Um, so if the storm's quick moving, obviously there's going to be some devastation, but actually the real problem comes later, as we saw with Harvey, with flooding. Uh, now, obviously, I'm not a weather expert, um, so I would definitely check, um, you know, and actually I used to work at two of the local Tampa stations, um, so one, um, there are several stations you can follow in like Tampa or like Sarasota, like Sarasota, there's WWSB. Tampa's got um, Fox 13, Bay News 9. Uh, and Bay News 9, actually, I have several friends that work there and they are, um, they're actually, usually you have to like pay to see the live stream, but during the storm, they're live streaming for free. So you can see local coverage. You can also check out the networks, um, you know, for some live national coverage. Um, but the local, the people that live and work in those areas are, they're definitely going to be, um, more familiar with the community itself. Um, so personally, I actually enjoy watching the local news and, uh, yeah, but check those out. Um, yeah, Bay News 9 has a live stream so you can watch and Bay News 9 is actually a 24 hour, um, cable station. So it's like a mini network in the Tampa Bay area. Um, but yeah, my folks are in Sarasota, but luckily they're not in, they're not in evacuation zone A, although 
I did notice something. We used to live in St. Petersburg and my old house, our old house is in evacuation zone A because it's a block from the water. So if we were still living there now, we would have had to evacuate. Um, so that's kind of, I, I'm kind of wondering to see what happens to our old house to see if afterwards it's still standing. Uh, I'm just, obviously we don't own it anymore, but I'm, I'm kind of curious. All right, we got Linda. Okay, Jason, I've heard police departments are good for Craigslist exchanges. Yes, and I've heard that too. Some of them even have designated places in their lobbies. And I've seen that as well. So that's another good suggestion if you are Craigslisting. The police station is obviously a very good place to meet up because there's cops there. Um, so you're going to assume someone's probably not going to try to commit a crime against you if they're at a police station. So that might be, and go during the daylight business hours, you know, so that it's not dark out. All right, um, Linda, my grandma passed away in 1986. I have her sewing machine. Oh, Linda, I'm so sorry. I know that was a long time ago, but um, that's that's really nice that you are able to keep something that she owned and, and have something that you use all the time. All right, Linda, the old machines are built much better, but the new ones do so much more. And that is a trade-off. Like, the old machines were built to last, but they don't have the bells and the whistles. And the new ones... You know, some of them, you, I don't know, I don't know how long they're going to last, but once the computerized functions go out, they may not, it may be hard to re repair them, um, but they, they do a lot more. So that's a really good point. I've got Victoria. My mom recently inherited her aunt's Kenmore from the 80s. What a beast made of solid metal when I used it for the first time in 30 years. I could smell it working. Oh, that's awesome. All right, we've got Allison. I got Linda. I got mine from my passed away grandfather, and by using the machine and taking care of it, I honor him. That's so sweet, and that is another thing to keep in mind if you have friends or family members who sewed and maybe downsizing or getting rid of machines. Or in this situation, um, if someone passes away, that is a nice way to honor their memory and also continue on something that they started too. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see, Linda, mine was built in the 1920s. I do need to have it checked out to make sure the wiring is okay. All right, Allison, I'm more focused on how if stitches if stay put, stays put. I'm designing gothic clothing. It has to be durable and sturdy. That sounds like a cool project. Victoria, one thing about the old Kenmore, she likes expensive thread. When she was using the cheaper stuff, she knots up and the tension goes all off. And that is something to keep in mind. I've noticed that with sewing machines too. Sometimes when you use really cheap thread, um, the sewing machine doesn't perform as well, so I know it's thread can be something that you think you can kind of cheap out on, but um, as far as thread goes, um, over time I've really gravitated towards just using the higher quality thread like the Aurafil. Um, I occasionally use Sulky. Um, I do have some spools of thread from, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Connecting Threads, which is kind of a lower cost quilting uh, website, and their thread quality actually is pretty decent. Um, but I've noticed like the, I have the problems with, I have tend to have problems with like the real cheap thread that you get at like Joann's or like Walmart. Like, so that's why I've pretty much just been sticking to, oh, and there's another company called like, like, uh, was it like a Wonderfill or something? And I have some really fine threads from there and I do like them. Um, so yeah, definitely using a, a quality thread can make a difference if you're having some issues with your sewing machine. But yeah, and if anyone else has any, if you have, if you've gotten any like crazy deals on sewing machines, let us know. Um, and also, I, I do want to give a little shout out to uh, Jason at Pink Castle Fabrics. Thank you so much for joining us in the live show, Jason. And Jason, so yes, I've popped up their logo there. If you haven't checked out the website, I have some links below to their site under the Cover Stitch Machine um, um item it's under the my so, so if you scroll down um i listed all my sewing machines except for the sale right because honestly i just i have not used that thing it's kind of sad um but the pink castle fabrics website they sell fabric they also sell they're a licensed dealer for genome sewing machines and brent and jason are very knowledgeable and very nice and i really want to focus on customer service so if you are looking for an online shopping experience with the customer service of a local dealership, definitely check them out. They're great people and they want to help you, especially if you're looking for a Janome machine or if you're just looking for some uh, quilting uh, supplies. And uh, they also have a really beautiful selection of Liberty of London fabrics. Um, and so Brenda has put together some bundles of uh, fat eighths and like fat quarters. Um, so if you like, if you really want to get like a, good variety of Liberty of London fabrics. Um, definitely check them out because, uh, you know, Liberty of London fabrics are not cheap, but if you can get like a bundle, like a variety pack 
um, at least then you can get more, you know, you can, like, especially with the Fat 8th bundle, if you're just looking for a little bit of each, that might be a good way to purchase it so you don't have to buy whole, yard, whole yardage and you can save a little bit of money that way. I've got Allison, can one use fishing wire? I mean, it would be less visible, but it doesn't actually have enough give. Um, you know, I actually saw a, um, I think it was on the Professor Pincushion channel. She used fishing wire um, as part of like a hem, so it looked all rolly. And it was actually very cool. I think she like zigzagged around it or around the fishing wire. So she didn't actually put the fishing wire in her sewing machine, but she used the fishing wire to do the hem. And I actually thought it looked pretty cool. Victoria, my mother-in-law only uses Coates thread for Walmart, from Walmart, and she actually has no issues. Though my husband's cousin found it broke in the wash. And Victoria, if that works for her, I think that's great. Personally, it has not worked out well for me. I've gotten a lot of thread breakage from it, and I hate thread breakage. So um, I, I found that me spending a little bit more money on the thread has been a good decision. All right, I think you can probably buy a clear thread, one with some stretch. Well, I'm mistaken. You know what? I do think there is some, uh, I do think there are, there is clear thread around. I think, um, and I've also seen some really cool, like, washable thread, like uh, the YLI stuff. So you can use that for basting and then it'll wash out. So you don't have to worry about picking the stitches out. And Linda says she uses old and cheap thread for hand basting and to keep buttons together. That's a good way to kind of make use of what you already have. Wonderful, yeah. So Jason recommends Wonderfill makes something called Invisifill, which is 100 weight. That's going to be pretty fine. I have some of the Wonderfill thread, and it is really, um, I got it to work on some, like, real fine slippery fabrics. Um, and I thought it was, it was really great thread. I got mine on a deal off of Massdrop, which is like a co-op buying site. And I got a variety pack of the Wonderfill. All right, so yeah, so this has been a great show, everybody. Um, if anyone else has anything else they'd like to add, but yeah, um, yeah, sewing machines, uh, they can be expensive, and you can spend a lot of money on them, but um, I do think it's really important that you buy the sewing machine that fits your needs that's within your budget. You know, if you, you know, aren't making a ton of money, you probably a, a $20,000 sewing machine might not be the, might not be something I would uh, go for, um, so just make sure when you are purchasing a sewing machine, you want something that one fits your needs and two is something that you can, um, pay for without it being a burden on you financially. And I think that's one thing, um, um, I think, I think Brenda and Jason do a good job of trying to help people find a sewing machine that's within their budget. I've been to shows and I've also, you know, like, I, I think, I think, what you want in a sewing machine dealer is someone that wants to help you find a machine that is within your budget versus trying to push you towards something you can't afford. Um, so if you're at a sewing machine dealer or if you're talking to someone and they're trying to push you into something that's beyond, you know, that's stretching your budget a bit, um, you may want to not buy from that person. They may not, because they obviously don't have your best interests at heart. Um, sort of like when you're looking at houses with a realtor and they keep trying to show you houses that are over the top of your budget. Um, that's not something you want. And again, and I mentioned this a little earlier, but I don't want to encourage you to do something that I personally don't feel is wise. And, uh, but again, if that is the way you want to roll, again, we can, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not judging you, but I, I personally have these convictions and I also don't want to be promoting something that I don't do myself. Um, but this has been a great, okay, and we've got, can you make a budget list so people have a good indication of what would suit your needs? Allison, I think that would be really hard because so many people use sewing for so many different things. Um, but I would say, uh, that's a really hard question to ask because, again, I think, I think, again, you're sewing goth clothing. You said you're designing, also it depends on what kind of fabrics you're working for, working with. If you're working with a lot of leathers and really thick uh, fabrics and doing a lot of like upholstery or like canvas, you may want to look at an industrial machine like Julian has. Um, if you're sewing like light, like if you're doing something where you're sewing baby blankets and baby clothes and you're not working with bulky fabrics, you could definitely get away with um, like just a regular pretty basic domestic machine. Um, but actually may, I don't know, but, and, and here's the thing, even if I came up with a list of like, if you sew these items, here's some sewing machines. I mean, I guess we could sort of try to do that, but, um, at the same time, I don't, 
I think it's a little it's a little bit of a slippery soap because even if I list off three sewing machines that I think might be good for a specific function, you know, there could be little nuances to your own situation that's different than than what I'm recommending. Um, I think the best way for you to do things, Allison, is to try out try out as many sewing machines as you can. I would recommend going to a sewing convention or some sort of like quilting convention because they always have sewing machine dealers there and you can dem you can actually try out the machines there. That would be a good way for you to try out, be able to try out a bunch of machines at a very, like basically for just the entry price into the show. Um, and you'd get to try out tons of different models and look at tons of different makes. But I think the, the thing that you need to do is definitely try to and th and I think that's why I where I went wrong personally especially with the sale right I didn't try it out first I just bought it online and I do think it was a bit of a mistake purchase because uh, I have not used it like I I tried to use it a little bit and I just didn't like sewing with it my husband didn't have my husband had a pretty easy time with it but I personally um in hindsight I wish I'd gotten one of those um jukey like DDL machines the industrials I think that would have serve me well and they um have a servo motor and they come with like a really nice table on it um and they're about the same price because i got like the premium package and i don't know i just i've made some missteps personally with buying sewing machines but so that's why i wanted to talk about it because i don't i don't want you guys to have to say make the same mistakes all right um allison i would be glad to help you'd probably search for domestic machines made by a certain manufacturer um, but yeah, Allison, I think it would be a little, like I've seen lists, people listing, oh, here's some three budget sewing machines, but here's the thing. They don't, the person making the list doesn't know what everyone's sewing and there's so many different forms of sewing. Um, I do think the best thing to do would be to, and also if you have like really good experience with like Janome machines or Renina machines, I think, um, you know, stick with the brand you like. You can venture out into other territories, but if there's a brand you really, really uh, feel speaks to you and is easier for you for you to use, um, you can stick within that line. But I think it's definitely important to talk to um, someone that actually is more of a sewing machine expert, someone like a Jason, that can walk you through what what would be best for your needs. Um, I'm familiar with some sewing machines. I'm not familiar with a lot of other ones. Um, there's so many out there that, you know, obviously you'd have to own all of them or Jul Julian who has 15. So Julian, you're probably more of a sewing machine expert than me at this point. All right. And, uh, Jason has some good advice. Buying machines is all about trust. Your local dealer should let you try out something, anything they have in the store. If not, that's a bad sign. I would, I would agree with that. But, um, but as far as your budget, as far as your budget goes, yeah. And here's the thing, like, if I tried to make a list, you know, also here, you have to keep in mind that your needs may change. Um, but in that case, you can decide, is it worth it to me for me to buy a machine that I can grow into a little bit? Or am I really that strapped for cash that I just need to get something really basic? Um, and if my needs change, then I can figure it out down the line. All right, we've got a Diana. My, my Bernina really does have a lot of good features. Elle said, I mean, one can spend all their money on a machine, but just like a filmmaker, if you spend all the budget on a camera, you won't have a movie. And that is that is so true. Um, but yeah, I think I, from my own personal experience, I've bought more machine than I needed, especially with that Junomi 7700 and the sale, right? I got like the LSZ1 or whatever. Um, a sale, right, also has recently come out with their own industrial machine. Uh, but I just, from using it, I personally haven't had, found, and again, I, I should probably play with it more. So maybe when I have more time, I could do that. But it is a little, it is, it can be a little tricky. I f personally found it not very user-friendly for me. All right, we've got Jason. Brand loyalty is helpful if you're buying the machine untested. If not, then you should try one out before changing brands. Some of it is personal preference. And yeah, so some of you may be diehard Bernita fans. Some of you may be really into Janomis or really into the Eversones or Jukies. Um, and that's the thing. There's not one right answer or one list that would fit everybody. It's, I think, I think sewing machine, buying a sewing machine is, it can be a pretty complicated process, especially when you're trying to calculate that, but you know, what does, what's my budget versus what fits my needs. And you need those two to match up. Um, in the past, I've done an okay job with that. Not great. 
Um, I mean, at least I didn't, I'm glad I didn't buy like a $10,000 machine. I definitely would not have needed that. Um, you know, and as I want to try out different things, then I can maybe look into buying an embroidery machine or when I'm, you know, retired, I can get a long arm quilting machine. Uh, but at this point, you know, I think the machines I have more than meet my needs. And I do think, especially with that Janome, I could have gotten the Skyline series for a lot less. And that also would have felt filled my needs. Um, I think Janome's are really good for quilting, though. I have personally had a really good experience with them doing quilting and actually for garment sewing as well. But if you're just doing garment sewing and you're not doing quilting, then obviously you don't need that huge throat space. And you can go with like a lower end Janome or you can go with the Eversone or go with one of the... And Eversone is actually made by the Bernina people. It's developed and um, it was actually developed by Philip Ulci, who is the Bernina like fifth generation owner. Um, so you do get a lot of those same Bernina features at a much lower price. All right, we've got uh, Linda, Allison, take pieces of fabric that you sew to try out the machines. That way you can tell if the machine will be able to handle what you need it for. Um, but yeah, if you're, I would say if you're looking to spend over $500 for a machine, you may want to try, I would definitely recommend trying it out first rather than just buying it blind because that's when you can end up unhappy with your decision or wishing you'd gotten a different one. Uh, a lot of us have had buyer's remorse over things. I'm sure I'm sure everyone out there has a buyer's remorse story. I've got several. Um, and in fact, we're actually in the process of kind of downsizing our lives and kind of getting rid of a lot of clutter. And I this week I've been seeing so many things that we bought that I really did not need. And in hindsight, I'm like, why did I even spend all this money on this? This is a way, this was a total waste. So you don't want to feel like that when you bought a sewing machine. Um, and you also don't want it to be something that straps you financially. You want the sewing machine to be a blessing instead of something you're, um, you can't afford or something that you regret later. So that's what I would say, but I know it's it's very hard to just have a list. Um, obviously, I've listed, I in every video, I always list all of the sewing machines I own so you can see what I use. But what I use may not necessarily be what's best for you to use um, either. I got, uh, okay, Allison, I meant it a different way. Let's say you want to make design clothes. It might be helpful to also have money. For, yeah, exactly. Um Exactly. Like if you want to, if you want to build up your sewing arsenal, um, like say you want to spend a thousand dollars total to get started on sewing. Um, you know, like you could get like a, an ever sewn machine for 300 bucks or $400. You could get a serger then for $200 and then you've got $400 left for fabric and supplies if you want to get started. Um, and yeah, fabric is a, can be a very costly uh, expense. And also there's so many supplies that you end up buying too. And also you buy, end up buying extra feet for your machine. Uh, so if you get a machine you want to get a walking foot for, you want to get like a rolled hem foot or something else that's special. So the price can quickly climb once you add in all the extras. All right, what pattern company do you like best? That is a really, uh, that's a pretty hard question. Um, for beginners, especially for garments, um, I got started with a couple of grain line studio patterns like the Scout Tee and the Linden Sweatshirt for knits. Um, I think they are very beginner friendly. They also have a lot of online support through blogs. Um, and lately I've been really gravitating towards the, all the McCall's Vogue uh, Butterick patterns. Um, I find the fit for me is really pretty spot on without doing any alterations. And I haven't found that for me with other pattern lines. Um, the other book I would recommend is um, Tilly and the Buttons Love at First Stitch. Um, it's a book very much geared towards beginners and it has like five included patterns and it actually comes with the um, it actually comes with the pattern um, paper. So, you, so it's not like a PDF or anything that you have to download. It actually comes with a little booklet full of the actual pattern pieces. I thought the fit for that line was very good for me for the uh, for the Tilly Buttons patterns and I thought the directions and the explanations in the book were excellent for someone if you're just getting started with garment sewing. They explained a lot of the terminology and did it in a fun and kind of fresh and approachable way. So that is definitely a book I would recommend picking up if you are new to sewing clothes. All right, we've got, uh, okay, English is not my first language. I do consider what you said very helpful. Allison, thank you very much and I hope, wish you the best with your goth sewing project. Definitely, um, if you 
post some pictures on Instagram, tag Sewing Report Squad. I'd love to see them. And if you guys make anything that you want me to see, um, definitely tag Sewing, do hashtag Sewing Report Squad. In the future, I would really like to maybe do something where I take some pictures from the week of stuff you guys have made and show it during the show. That's again, if I have some more time to do production and whatnot, but I think that would be a lot of, a lot of fun. Uh, but this show has been awesome. And uh, yes, yeah, we definitely have, we definitely have covered quite a few things during this show. Uh, but as always, I've had a great time. And again, if you're watching, if you're watching live, thank you so much for being with us. If you're watching on the replay, welcome also. And uh, feel free to leave any comments or questions below in the description box. We'll be, ne we'll be here next week. And I'm trying to figure out a topic for next week. If you have any suggestions, um, let me know. Because uh, I am not sure what we're going to do next Sunday. So it could be kind of random. We will, we will see. Um, so yeah, this has been awesome. I got to log off soon and uh, do some cleaning and organizing and uh, getting ready for the week ahead. But this has been fun. And, and thank you for humoring my, uh, my $300 wedding story. I've been wanting to tell it for a while. Um, all right. Oh, I use a hashtag. And Vic, I have noticed. So I have noticed. So uh, thank you for doing that. And I noticed a few others have as well. And Jason from Pencastle Fabrics. Thank you. Jason, you and Ju we had two dudes this hour. This is like epic. Um, I know we've had a few guys in here before. So Jason and Julian. And Julian, I want to see you making that sewing machine collection video you need to show off your sewing machine collection i think that would be awesome all right guys i will see you all later and i hope everyone has a great week and again if you are somewhere if you are somewhere in florida please please stay safe you guys have a great week